Often as a teacher in chemistry, I'm asked, what, what's the coolest reaction that you've ever done? What's the coolest reaction that you've ever seen in a lab? And a lot of the time, kids are expecting you to say, um, you put sodium in water, or you put lithium in water, and it, and it bubbles or it blows up. You put um, potassium in acid and it'll blow up. There'll be a massive explosion. However, I think the most striking reaction in chemistry is the following. You take this man on the left, and you add C2H5OH, okay, that's a simple hydrocarbon, and you will end up with something that looks a little like this. Now, of course, don't worry about balancing the equations here. I don't know whether these are the two same people, but obviously the substance C2H5OH is actually what we know uh, as alcohol. And so being a bit more serious here, alcohol or ethanol. Ethanol is way more correct than alcohol because alcohol is actually a massive group of different hydrocarbons. We've spoke already about the alkanes and the alkenes. This is just another type known as the alcohols. Okay, Ethanol is one of them and that is the one that we find in beer, wine, spirits, all of those things which I'm sure that you guys haven't tried yet. But if your parents have or your brothers and sisters have and you've, you've seen what's happened to them, then you know that it's quite a powerful substance. So, ethanol is written C2H5OH. You might be confused there because you've got H appearing twice. We could, and you wouldn't be marked wrong, we could write that as C2H6O because we've got five hydrogens plus the other one makes six and then O. However, often we do write it as OH because this tells us that we have an alcohol. This group here, if we have an OH group, that normally tells us that we have an alcohol group. So when we are writing the formula uh, for the alcohol, in this case ethanol, it is usual for you to see it written like this, with the OH written separately from the rest, which is C2H5. And I don't want to spend too long on it, but if I was to draw that out just so you get an idea, it would look like this. So you have two carbons, and just like in an alkane, there's no double bond here, each carbon is bound to as many things as it can be. Five of those are hydrogens on their own, and the next one, and hence why we write OH, is an oxygen, which in turn is bound to a hydrogen itself. So this here is the reason we don't write C2H6O normally, because this hydrogen is not bound to a carbon, it's bound to the oxygen. And so we've already mentioned that ethanol can be used in alcoholic drinks or beverages, but it can also be used as a fuel. Okay, More, most importantly, it can be used as a biofuel. So, a fuel or a biofuel. And also, we can use it in a chemical lab as a solvent. As a solvent. So, some things dissolve in water very easily, some things don't, and we need a different solvent in order for them to dissolve. So we can use things like ethanol, we can use things like hexane, cyclohexane, and they're different chemicals which will dissolve different things. Now there are various ways that we can actually produce this ethanol. There isn't only one reaction we can use. So let's have a look at them now. The first is fermentation. Fermentation. I'm writing that in green for a reason, because that is letting living organisms do the work for us in order to produce the ethanol. And so fermentation is turning sugars. Those sugars can be found in plants because plants can create sugars via photosynthesis. Those sugars can be fermented or turned into ethanol. And what happens in yeast, so normally we will use yeast because they're very efficient at this. Yeast will break down the sugar. Now you don't need to remember the formula um, for the glucose, but I'm gonna write it anyway for completion. Glucose will be broken down into ethanol, which is C2H5OH, plus carbon dioxide. And obviously that's not balanced, so this is actually balanced. But what we've got is glucose is fermented to ethanol plus carbon dioxide. Now you might be wondering, well why can't we just do that in a test tube? Well, because the most important thing here is that this happens in the presence of 
an enzyme or a group of enzymes. It's mainly a group of enzymes that carry out this entire reaction. So we need an enzyme. The enzyme is not written in the chemical equation because an enzyme speeds up a reaction. An enzyme is a catalyst. The definition of an enzyme is a biological catalyst. And so it will speed up the reaction, but it will not actually react itself. So within yeast, the fact that it has these enzymes allows it to turn the sugar into ethanol. We then extract the ethanol from the yeast and we can use it to uh, produce beer and wine. For spirits, we're going to use a different process, which I'll come on to in a minute. And so the reason we don't use yeast to produce things like spirits is because this process will only give us around about 15-ish percent. So you don't need to remember this number, but it's useful to know because over about 15% alcohol content, uh, the yeast will actually start to die because alcohol obviously is poisonous. That's why it gives us the negative effects that we can feel and eventually the yeast will start to die. So about 15% is achievable and you'll know uh, if you've seen a bottle of spirit or, or anything, they can range up to around about 50% alcohol content or more. And so obviously fermentation is not going to be suitable uh, for that case. But for things like beers and wines, the percentage alcohol in a beer or a wine is going to be 15% or below. For beers, maybe you're going to be between 2% and 6%, and for wines, it's going to be a bit higher. Uh, and so this is a useful experiment um, or a useful process we can use for the production of beer and wine. And so another method we can use actually involves a chemical we've already come across. So if you think back to my video on alkenes, you know what an alkene is. And you know that ethene sounds similar to ethanol because it begins with the same letters. And that is actually what we're going to use. We're going to use ethene and we're going to hydrate it to form ethanol. Hydration in this case means the addition of water. So the chemical addition of water. And so in this process we have ethene and we need to add water. But because this reaction is going to happen at a very high temperature, that means that the water is going to not be you know, water like you would see in a water bottle. It's going to be the gaseous form, which is steam. So ethene plus steam is going to give us our ethanol. Ethanol. Okay, and in chemical form, if you like, ethene will remember the formula for alkenes. C2H4 plus steam, which is just water, so H2O, is going to give us C2H5OH. And that is actually balanced already. I don't need to do any more balancing. You can check if you like. Now important here is that this happens in the presence of a catalyst as well, not an enzyme this time. Because remember previously, we're using yeast and yeast is a living organism, so it has enzymes as catalysts. Whereas if we are doing this chemically in a lab or industrially, then we can't use enzymes uh, because at very high temperatures, enzymes just don't work. So we have a different form of catalyst and we just call it a catalyst. And so this looks pretty good because we can produce actually very high percentage uh, purity of ethanol. And we're also not getting any CO2 given off uh, directly in this reaction. However, this reaction is known as reversible. So this is a reversible reaction. All that means is that the reaction can go the other way. At this temperature, ethanol can break down and reform ethene and steam or water. Okay. So that means it can go forwards and it can go backwards. That is going to limit the amount of ethanol that we are going to produce. The way that we get around this is we use a very high temperature and a high pressure and we also we recycle any ethene and water back into the reactor to produce more ethanol. And when we produce ethanol, we, uh, we separate it basically. So we keep the reaction going, keep it going, keep it going, just to produce more of our product. So problems with this is that high temperature and high pressure is an expensive condition. So it's expensive and we need to burn fuels in order to produce that high, uh, high temperature and high pressure because we need a lot of energy. We also, the main way we produce ethene is by cracking of larger, larger hydrocarbons. Those hydrocarbons obviously come from crude oil. So the ethene here is from crude oil which is a fossil fuel. It's a limited resource and it's not very, it's not renewable, sorry, non-renewable resource. Therefore, it's going to run out and it's not very good for the environment in that sense. 
So you need to be able to talk about the positives and negatives of both ways of producing ethanol. Up here we have fermentation. This produces a lower amount of ethanol that we can take out or separate. Also, we do get CO2 given off as well, and that is a waste because we have a waste gas given off. Not all of the glucose directly makes ethanol. However, this is environmentally friendly because we're using living organisms, so it's a renewable resource. So it's renewable. This will happen at low temperatures. Because this isn't an industrial process, we are using a living organism, yeast actually only survives at a certain temperature. And that means that the energy costs are low. So this is a relatively inexpensive way of forming our ethanol. Okay. Lastly, when we produce ethanol in this sense, we call it bioethanol. Therefore, if we are using it for, as a fuel, it is known as a biofuel. That just means that it is coming from a renewable source, from a living uh, organism, which is our yeast. The downsides to that, of course, are that we need to use crops in order to produce the glucose. If we are using crops to produce glucose to make ethanol, then we are not making the glucose or anything else from those crops in order to produce food or drink. And so this is another case where we need to argue, is it right for us to clear crops which could be used for food in order to produce a fuel or alcohol for alcoholic drinks, which obviously is not essential for us. It's a, it's a guilty pleasure which people enjoy. And also, if we are not going to clear current farming areas, then that means we are going to probably destroy existing habitats for other species of animals and plants and things like that. So we're destroying other ecosystems. So we need to argue for and against of fermentation and of hydration, and there are the positives and negatives. So I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please do write them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.